Hello and welcome to PDFsupply.com. Today we're going to be discussing GE Quick Panel View or Quick Panel. Uh, what we're going to be talking about here is just the basics of how to power it up, uh, how to connect up to it, how to make sure that you have a good working Ethernet port, and how to change your memory battery as, as well as connecting up to the device using Prophecy Machine Edition. Okay. Um, so what I have in front of you here is an IC754 VSI06STD, alright? Uh, you may notice that there are letters that follow that. You may have different letters that won't matter for this. This is just the revision. And, uh, but all things that we're going to be discussing are, will be applicable to all, all units, all revisions, okay? So now the first thing that I wanted to point out is, is uh, where we would obviously start, which is powering up the device. I'm using a 24 volt DC power supply and I have it plugged in. I'm going to just turn this so that you guys can see it. My positive and negative leads from the 24 volt power supply. And I've associated my positive and negative leads according to what this label is describing. One is a ground, a negative terminal, and a positive terminal. Okay, so there's three terminals on there. For the sake of this uh, video, I don't actually have it uh, grounded, but I do recommend that you, you know, do what, whatever is mentioned in the manual as far as grounding it. Okay. Uh, since we still have this on its uh, showing its backside, I wanted to point out that there's a little push button area here that releases this back cover. Okay, and that allows you access to the memory battery container. All right. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out that's uh, important is that uh, the battery that you'd be using is a 3 volt button style battery. Okay, and I'm going to see if I can get this close enough for you guys to see. It is a CR2032 is the proper size battery for this application. Now, notice that there are two prongs. These are actually springs at the tip of my finger. Okay, those two springs are where the battery should land last. Now, the positive polarity should be facing up as I've got it in my hand right now. You guys can see that this positive polarity and the negative down. But what you want to do is insert it at an angle so that it goes down underneath of there's a catch that holds the battery and then firmly press the back side down. The back side would be the side with the two springs I just mentioned into place. Okay. The trouble is if you just try to put the battery on top and press it down, you could be pressing down um, the, uh, the two areas, the two spring areas that grab the positive polarity and crush them. And then you would have no uh, memory battery whatsoever. Okay? All right, another thing is, is your Ethernet port is located right here. We're going to close this. Okay? And... I'm going to power the device up. Okay. Now the first indication you're going to get is a is a green light on the side that shows that it's been powered up. If you have a program at this point, you would see your program file. It would load up your program file. If you do not have a program, if it's a new unit or if it's a remanufactured unit that the programs have been cleared out of, then you're going to see this looks like a, a typical Windows screen. Okay? So there's a few things that you have to do first. Okay? Now going back to uh, the Ethernet port, what I want to do now that I'm powered up and I can see that it seems to be working okay, I want to check my Ethernet port. So I'm going to take my Ethernet cable, plug it into the Ethernet port, okay? Make sure it's all the way in and make sure that you get these uh, lights blinking. You guys can see that there indicating that it's uh, that's connected. All right. Next thing. Again, this is assuming that it's it's blank. I'm going to go to start. I'm going to go to settings. Network and dial-up connections. Now, a couple things. Uh, first, if there was a problem with the Ethernet port. This is LAN 1, okay? This is your Ethernet port uh, on this Windows uh, 
configuration here. If there's a red X through it, that usually indicates that you've got some sort of issue with that port, okay? That also goes for some of you out there that may have two ports, depending on the, the quick panel device you're using. Anything with a red X through it's not good. There's, that's usually indicates that there's, it's sensing an issue there. All right, but we don't have that, so we're gonna double click there. Now what I've done is I've specified a particular IP address in this device um, that, that is something that doesn't conflict with anything else on my network here in my lab, okay? So I've, I've put a, a, the final three digits is, is far above anything in my lab, and I don't have to worry about that. If in the event you guys um, wanna choose your own address, the way that you would fill in these numbers, of course, is to tap on this keyboard here, okay? I have a stylus, and I double tap, and I can go to numbers, and I can put whatever numbers in I want. You can move this so that you're able to see what it is you're typing in, okay? So you would just put your cursor wherever it is you want to make a change, as, as you can see it blinking right there, and you can, you know, fill it in. When you want to make this disappear, this keyboard disappear, simply double click again and it's gone. Okay, so I'm okay with this address. This is uh, ending in 1.232, so I'm gonna click okay, uh, and I'm gonna exit this screen. All right, now what I'm gonna do, if you guys will uh, connect it to my uh, computer, and I'm gonna go to my command prompt and I'm going to say I want to ping I want to ping this address I just made and hit enter so ping space 192.168.1.232 alright and what I'm looking for is a reply I have immediate reply and that's telling me that this port is working. Now, if, if you wanted to, you could always unplug this port. So I'm going to disconnect that Ethernet cable. I'm going to hit my up key. It's going to give me the same command, which is pinging the same address, and I'm going to hit enter. And what I expect to see is nothing. I expect to see that the, you know, the request is timed out and that it's not reaching anything. Okay, so that would tell me that this indefinitely is is a working port and and we weren't just pinging another address that somebody had uh, established okay so I'll plug that back in All right. now that we're sure that the Ethernet port is working uh, that allows us to connect up to uh, prophecy machine edition okay now before I do that though uh, one other thing I wanted to point out, depending on what the situation is with your quick panel, if, uh, if you're in a situation where you've purchased a, a quick panel that has a program on it, or if you have a program that you're looking to get rid of on a quick panel and load a new program, you have to erase the old program, yeah? So, I'm going to go to Start, go to Programs, go to Windows Explorer, all right? And then I'm going to go to specifically flash storage. Double click on that. Now, as I pointed out before, as, as you saw before, there's no program in this particular uh, quick panel. But if there were, you would see files that would extend throughout here. Okay. Now, uh, Windows and Documents and Settings, I would be really, really clear about this. You don't ever want to erase Windows and Documents and Settings. That has to stay there. Okay. But if there are other files that exist on here, you would simply click on the file, go to file, and hit delete. All right, we don't want to do that in this case, but uh, that is exactly how you do it. And it, sometimes it'll ask you if you want to delete all uh, or, or cancel that command. So again, one more time, make sure you keep windows and you keep documents and settings if you if you ever end up in this flash storage area and if you need to um, erase any files they could be found here if you have other programs that need erasing this is where they would be found all right if you're done here then you can uh, exit that file all right now in uh, prophecy machine edition it's pretty simple what you want to do is I have, this is a, a new file that I just created. It's, it's technically blank. I don't have a whole lot to show you here. 
but I would say, as you could see, the same part number IC754 VSI 06 CTD uh, is the same part number that we're connected to. Okay. Target one, what I want to do is right click and go to properties, and this is my connection area. So I've added the same address that I indicated before, ending in that 232 number, which allows me to connect up to this quick panel. Okay. And all you would simply do is hit your online offline button to connect up to it. And once you're connected, uh, you can go to target and download target one. Okay, target one again is described as if you look over here once more in my navigator bar, this is target one, which is the, uh, the, the six inch view panel and the, the same Ethernet address that's both on target one and the view panel itself. All right, so when you hit download target, it's gonna ask you to look for the file. You'll have to have a downloaded file, of course, on, on Prophecy Machine Edition. And if you do, you're able to follow the uh, prompts and, and download to your quick panel, okay? It's that simple. Now, I'm gonna exit out of here. Uh, see how easy this is. Just to show you guys how I created this file, okay? This is the file right here that's uh, illuminated in blue. I can go to, go to File, New Project, uh, and then I go to uh, uh, Quick Panel, View Control, and I go down to, in, in this uh, particular case, IC754 VSI 06 CTD, okay? Anyway, that's where it can be found, and then you can name the project up here. As you saw, I just named the project over here is, is the same as the actual part number, so that I would remember it. But uh, that's that's where you would f be able to establish a new project. Okay. Um, if uh, if you guys are interested in view panels, please see us at pdfsupply.com or call us at 1-800-360-6802 for pricing and availability. Thank you.